Well, good morning once again, everybody. It's so good to see hey, everybody. Church, I just want to say so hello, anybody. and, and uh, we edit this other part out before sometimes, so I want to introduce myself once again. My name is Eric Bucci, and I'm the lead pastor here at Cornerstone Church, and if this is your first time here, everybody. I want to welcome you, those that are here, and also those that are in line. We want to let you know how important you are to God. We thank you. We thank God for you. We know we are watching. I've heard people even watching in, was it Australia? Someone's watching in, I don't remember what country it was, but we have people from around the world. Uh, South don't I feel important, but it's interesting how people will find us. You never know. So can you welcome everyone that's watching online? Come on, nice and loud, everybody, and welcome them. And um, feel free to interact and put amen. you have any prayer concerns or prayer requests, then we'd love to hear you. We're in the middle of a series uh, called The Way, The Truth, and The Life. We're going to get right into it. And what we're talking about is that Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. A lot of folks struggle with that. They think that's being intolerant. In fact, people would say tolerance is the, is the number one attribute that people ask from us. I don't know if you've noticed that. But what, what's happened is I, I always thought tolerant meant that I will give you grace and you give me grace even if we disagree. But tolerance has changed in our culture today. Tolerance means you agree with what I say or else you're intolerant. And that's not the way we should be as believers or I, I, either way. In fact, I heard of a story of a professor at a university that was teaching that saying in his philosophy class that God does not exist. And it, it, it's just, it's, we evolved. And he talks about we evolved from apes and there's no such thing as a God. And he says, in fact, I'll just prove to you there's no God. If you're real, knock me down right now. And so he did it in front of all these students one time, twice. He did it again. He got more verbose. He didn't realize, but the door was open to his classroom. There was a football player that was a believer, heard that. God, if you're real, knock me down. So the football player got like this and knocked the professor down, and he, boom, fell over. said, why did you do that for? And the football player said, well, God was busy, so he sent me. <laughs> if I offended you, loosen up. So uh, today, there's a lot of intolerance out there, and people say tolerance. But, you know, the truth of the matter is there's things called truth. And today, what we're going to talk about is this. Many people struggle because they think that Christianity is so antiquated because we say that Jesus is the only way. Many people say, no, he is a way, but Jesus does not give that to us. He say he is the only way, he's the only truth, and he is the only life. Now, I like what I read. Uh, I don't like what I read, but this is what I read recently, so I took it down. This is what it said. Someone talked about Christianity. This is what they said. I could no longer accept the idea that there's only one way to heaven. I can't believe in a God so cruel he would torture people for eternity just because they did not believe in Jesus. I can't be a follower of an intolerant religion like that. There's other, other people, or perhaps one of the most famous women in the world that has talk shows and has a magazine, talk says that all roads lead to heaven, and it doesn't make a difference what you believe. And so, but the problem is, if you can call it a problem, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. And the reason why Jesus was killed was not because he said, I am a way. He said, I am the way. He said he was God. And so, listen, everybody, this is what separates everything. So I want to just bring your attention to what happened in our series. We're going to just quickly review for a few moments. I won't go too long. But what happened was Jesus was talking about what was going to take place in his life in the coming days. And it was very disturbing to his disciples. And so Thomas said, said this, no, Lord, we don't know where you're going. Thomas said, we have no idea where you're going, Jesus. What's going to happen here? Because Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a way for you and all that. Tell him what's going to happen. He says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? How do we know the way? But have you noticed how things are a little unpredictable right now in our culture? Lord, what are we supposed to do, Lord? What is the way? What is the way in my life? And we have a lot of questions. And the good news is, you know what? God has made life so simple. The love of God simplifies life. The sin of our flesh in the world complicates life. If your life is complicated, you have a lot of sin in your life. Because God is not a complicated God. He's a simple God but extremely profound. And Jesus makes life so simple. He says the following. He told him, he tells us, I am 
And I am means he's saying I am God. That's what he's saying. That's what that phrase means. I am the way. I, I don't show you the way. I am the way. He says, I, I am the truth. I, I don't show you truth. I am the truth. He goes on to say, and not only that, I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And the first week we mentioned this. It's not your, it's not your intention, but your direction that determines your destination. Direction, not intention, determines your direction, uh, your in, the destination, excuse me. So if you think that you, for example, you say, I'm, I'm following God, but you're going the opposite direction. If you say, I'm going to Disney World, and you're going north towards Canada, you're not going to end up in Disney World no matter how hard you do. Of course, if you get there, there's 28,000 people that just been laid off. They're having a hard time over there. But anyhow, direction, not the intention, determines the destination. We mentioned that the first week. We also, in week two, we talked about the truth. Jesus is the truth. And we said this, what is truth? And this is a definition that I came up with that I believe is real truth. And it's this, facts, information or facts, plus the love of Jesus in relationship equals truth. Facts plus the love of Jesus in relationship equals truth. Because truth in itself is not truth unless it's involved in together with Jesus. Religion talks about religious ideas and perhaps facts. But without the love of God, the Bible is dangerous. With the love of God, it's like a scalpel. It cuts, it heals, it delivers, it defends. So, Facts plus the love of God. Truth is absolute and unchanging. Truth does not evolve. We may find out more things about the truth, but the truth does not change. In fact, Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. There's only one way, the Bible says. So in the third part three, which was last week, we said Jesus is life. And living in Jesus Life is a choice. At every moment, we choose to live in life or death. Choose life. And so life is the life of Jesus. We have two choices in life. We mentioned also last week that many people go after the things of God, including different religions. And we mentioned the fact that imagine a barge coming in or a large ship. Behind the ship is a wake. And people, imagine the wake of love, the wake of truth. And people will go after the wakes, but not after the vessel that creates the wakes. And God wants us to be connected to him. Not the things of him, but to him himself. Because he's the epicenter of every good and perfect gift. You know, it's so interesting. A recent, uh, recent Pew Research poll said this. That 70% of Americans with a religious affiliation, 70% of Americans with a religious affiliation believe that all roads lead to heaven. It doesn't make a difference what you believe as long as you are sincere. In fact, anyone that says, I remember being in a social studies class way back in the 1980s, and our professor said anyone that says they have the right religion is wrong. And I asked him, how can you say that? Because there's no way, no one can know the truth. But you just told me, I actually said this, but you're contradicting yourself, sir, because you said you know the way. So the fact that you're saying that means you have an absolute. And he got upset with me. (laughs) Anyhow, anyhow. So Jesus told him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through to me. And... There is salvation and no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. How can you be so exclusive? Because there is a way, there is a truth, there is a life, and Jesus encompasses them all. He loves us. He's the only religious leader that said, I am the way. Everyone else said, I'll show you the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Buddha did not say, I am the way. Muhammad did not say, I am the way. Only Jesus says that. Why? For the Son of Man came to seek and save that, those that are lost. If you are alive today, and I assume you are because you're here or you're watching, God has a calling on your life, and you're not an accident. 
He loves you so much. He really does. And he wants everyone to come know him. Your creator made you. He longs to know you. He calls out to you. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, he he has put eternity into the heart of men and women. There's something inside of you that cries out, there has to be more. The reason why you cry out for more, because there is more. Fish don't ask the question, why is this wet? But human beings say there's got to be more. Why would we ask, why would we say there, there must be something more unless there is something? You wouldn't long for something if it wasn't there. The fact that you get hungry for food means you want to eat. And there is, even atheist. Whoever you are, there is a longing for God because you're created by God for God. And until you give your life to God, you're going to literally hurt yourself and other people. So why is Jesus the only way? Come on, be real. I'm going to be real with you, everybody. He is the only way. How do you know that? Well, 1 Peter says this, always be prepared for those of us that believe in Jesus Christ and have given Christ our lives, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And by the way, you don't have to be an intellectual scholar. Just say, this is what I used to be before I came to know Christ. This is how I came to know Christ, and here I am today. That's all you have to do. I think most of us can do that if you give your life to Christ, right? Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with arrogance on social media. Doesn't it say that? It doesn't say that, does it? But do this with what? I want to hear that. Gentleness. What does gentleness mean? Go ahead. You can say it out loud. You at home, too. Go ahead. I can hear you through the tube. Right? Gentleness means gentleness, right? Kind, not rough. Gentleness and what? Respect. Hello. We should never employ the systems of this world because none of us could stand without God. You're not all that, and neither am I. You know, the truth is this. Christianity, not religion, but faith in Jesus Christ is the most inclusive way in the entire world. No other religion is as inclusive as Christianity. It's not elusive. It's inclusive. Come to me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, there's four views on an attorney with God I want to bring to your attention, and I'll share with you what I believe is the right one, because according to the scriptures, right? The first one, we have universalism, uh, excuse me, universalism, which I'll talk about in a few moments. The second one is pluralism, which I would say predominantly is our culture today. The third one is inclusivism. And the, finally, the fourth one is exclusivism. Okay? And there's four primary views. Now, also there are views of atheism, of course, and deists. They don't, atheists don't believe in God. Deists believe that God made it and walked away. We don't really know who he is or she is or whatever it is. That's what they say. But we believe God is God. God the Father, right? But there are four primarily views of people that have a religious leaning. The first one is universalism. You ever hear the church of universalist? They believe everything, basically. All roads lead to heaven. doesn't make a difference what you believe as long as you believe in something. In fact, you don't even have to believe in anything. That's what they believe. Universalism is the belief that everyone, regardless of his or her belief or unbelief, will be accepted by God for all eternity, this view affirms that all people will be ultimately saved and that no one will experience God's punishment, including Hitler. They believe that. Just just this wonderful energy field that's just out there. It's an impersonal thing. In fact, Hinduism believes this type of thing, that you just become one with God. Now, what does Jesus say? This is what Jesus says, for the gate is narrow. How can you be so narrow-minded? Well, because the, because the gate is narrow and the way is hard. Have you noticed it's a little hard? Yeah. That leads to life. By the way, he does all the hard work. All we got to do is follow him. The gate is narrow and the way is hard. It leads to life. And those who find it are many. 
I wish you could say many, but it says few. Chances are, if everyone's doing something, it's probably wrong. It's probably wrong. Then we have pluralism. Now, what does this mean? We have universalism. Everything goes. It doesn't make a difference. We don't know who God is, but there's a God. And he's a, basically, universalism is Barney. If, if you could make a God, it would be Barney. You know who Barney is? Not Barney Fife from the Andy Griffith Show. I'm talking about the irritating purple dinosaur. The only thing more irritating when I had young children, besides Barney, were Teletubbies. But the most agitating was, hello, boys and girls, boing, boing, you know. I love you, you love me, we're, yeah, that's Barney, okay. That's universalism. Then we have pluralism. What does that mean? It restricts salvation to religious people. So it's a little more sophisticated. These are people that 70% of Americans believe this. Restricts salvation to religious people. doesn't make a difference, regardless of what their religion is. This belief maintains that all religions are equally valid. Now listen, it's all right to tolerate our faith tells us to tolerate people with different faiths. Doesn't mean we agree with them, but we allow them to have their view respectfully. We just read it before, okay? So, this belief maintains that all religions are equally valid. The variety of world religions are different paths that lead ultimately to the same God. It doesn't make a difference if you're, and by the way, I struggled with this. When I was in seminary, the second year of seminary, I saw a lot of problems. Sometimes they call seminary, cemetery, and it was a cemetery for me for the second year I was there. I began to doubt God. I began to see problems. I began to ask myself the question, what happened if I grew up in India and my dad was a Hindu priest? Would I be a Hindu? Or if my dad was an Iman, would I be a Muslim? How do I know the true God? And I really doubted. In fact, I began to, ready to give up on it. But one thing stopped me was the testimony of my dad, who at the age of 16 had a vision of Jesus. He's now a little bit older. And he's never had an experience like that again. He's 85 years old. He's never had an experience like that again. And that held me, which I'll share with you a little bit later. By the way, today at 1 o'clock, we have Growth Track Step 1. We'd love to have you come either virtually or in person. So pluralism restricts salvation to religious people. And they believe ultimately it's all the same God. The problem with pluralism is if you're a true believer in Islam, you're not. Islam and Christianity do not work together. Aren't they the same? No, they're not the same. They're not the same. Every other religion is due. Christianity is done for us. The Bible says there's no, not one that is righteous. No, not one. Let me tell you something, everybody. You might not like this. You are a wreck, and you are a mess, and so am I. You think you're a pretty good person? You're not. I, how can I be so positive? I'm positive if you're not a very good person. Aren't you glad you're watching this today? Well, let me explain here for a moment. Imagine if I could. Imagine if I could invite you back next week, and we had a, we had a way to connect something to your, your head, and we could show on this big screen everything you said and everything you did this past week, and, and every person you said something about or thought something negative, they would be here in audience. How many of you would come? The fact that you're laughing proves my point. There's not one that's righteous, no, not one. And that's the genius of the gospel. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Every other religion's about doing, and Jesus did it for us. Why am I raising my voice? Because it's the most wonderful thing in all the earth. Because I don't have it, and neither do you. Isn't it a wonderful news, everybody? That's the good news. Imagine if you were, there was a woman I read a story of that was in the third floor of an apartment building. And it was fire, it was on fire. There was no way for her to get out of the building. The fire workers could not get to her. So they were outside with a, with what you call a net to catch her. And they told the woman, ma'am, this is the fire department. We're going to ask you to jump. And we will catch you. By grace you have been saved. Not of yourself, lest no one can boast. And so what the woman had to do, she couldn't see. I can't, all I see is smoke. 
ma'am, you're going to have to jump. So but by her jumping, that takes faith to jump. But faith does not save you. Grace saves you. And grace is the safety net of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you. And what he's asking you to do is take a leap into his love. So you're not saved by faith. You're saved by grace through faith. That's what it's about. So pluralism believes all wrote. And listen, my friends, any religion, for example, Buddhism. I heard people say this. Well, Buddhism has a story of a prodigal son just like Christianity. The problem with the Buddhist story is the son that comes back has to work it off. In Christianity of Jesus Christ, the father worked it off for the son and accepted him just the way he is. And that's the kind of God we have, everybody. He loves you no matter what you've been through. He accepts you, not based upon what you've done, but based upon what he's done. It's, it's genius. It's the most genius thing in all the universe. Now we have this, which is more closer to um, a lot of believers believe this. Inclusivism affirms that no one can be saved apart from the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So they believe that. They believe uh, the way, you know, they believe that Jesus is the way, truth, and the life. They believe that. However, salvation is wider than only those who have personally trusted in Jesus Christ as their Savior. In other words, they believe if you are born in, uh, let's suppose you, you're in Saudi Arabia, and you never hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you, if you face Mecca three times a day, and you, you pray to Allah that God is going to save you because of the information that you know. That's what they would believe. But uh, you know what the Bible says? Jesus, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, not Allah. So there are believers that believe this, and there's some truth in this. And then there's the next one here, exclusivism. This is the one that I, I believe, but I'm not a hyper-exclusivist. What's a hyper-exclusivist? A hyper-exclusivist is a person that can go heaven, hell, heaven, hell, 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 heaven. In other words, they know where everyone's going to go because they're perfect. That's a religious spirit. The truth of the matter is only God can judge. We are couriers. We tell people Christ is the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. No one comes to the Father except for me. And by the way, let me say something. That statement in the next 30 years will put you in prison. That statement, you might lose your job. That statement, you might be tortured and killed. And if someone says to me, is Jesus Christ the only way? I will proudly say, yes, he is. And you can do what you want with me. But Jesus is the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, sir or mister. I believe in Christ. And if I have to die for it, I will die for it. But I will not die for a political platform. But I will die for Jesus Christ. And this is what we need to do, everybody. And by the way, it's coming. It's coming. Right now, just because we, by the way, I don't know what it is about us as Americans. Do you realize right now there's more persecution in the world right now than there ever was in the history of the world because there's more people? Do you realize that people are being killed in North Korea for the faith? Do you believe that people are being killed in Iran because they believe in Jesus Christ? That people are being imprisoned in China? lost all their money, lost their jobs, separated from family, children. Listen, communism is evil. And China is a communist country. It's an evil system that oppresses. That's not political. It's called truth. And so how do we know that Jesus is the only way? What about those who have never heard of Jesus Christ? What about those? What about someone, a woman who lives and Saudi Arabia, and believes that Allah is the way. What's going to happen to her? Are you telling me God's going to send her to hell? I'm not, going to, I'm, I'm not telling you anything. I'm just saying that Jesus is the way. Well, how does that work? Well, let me go ahead and explain something to everybody, okay? Here it is. How does God reveal himself? Natural revelation. What does that mean? Everyone has received a knowledge of God. Everyone. Even the biggest, even Richard Dawkins, the atheist, even he 
the fact that he's so angry at, at faith shows you he's got an, he knows it's true. I don't get angry about Santa Claus. So he acts, I mean, think about it. Natural revelation. You can see that God's here. In fact, I was just reading this past week, and I was reading about astronomers and what they say. You know, I'll just read this to you. It's amazing. Astronomers can now view objects. Check this out. 47 billion light years away. They can see through the Hopa telescope and through infrared. 47 billion years. What does that mean? Speed of light travels at 186,282 miles per second. That's pretty fast. Some of you draw that fast. No, you draw that fast to come to church today. But 186,282 miles per second. Now, check this out. If you travel at that speed across our own Milky Way, our Milky Way, and there's all a bunch of like Milky Ways, guess how long it would take you? Check this out. Just across our own Milky Way, and there's billions of our type Milky Ways out there, it would take you 150,000 years. Now, that doesn't blow your mind. I don't know what else will. God made it all. It's ridiculous. A lumber truck, a steel club, a steel truck, and a nail truck collided right here in front of our, right here in Route 70. It happened six years ago. They collided, and all of a sudden, it fell out, and the nails jumped together, and this place built itself. It did. You believe me? There was no architect. There was no designer. There's no construction work. It just happened. Now, how ridiculous is that? It's insane. I, I, that's what people are saying who don't believe there's a God. It's crazy. Natural revelation. Everyone has received a knowledge of God. Now, here's something you may not want to hear. For the wrath of God. That's what does wrath mean. Wrath means explosive disruption. Wrath, anger. God is angry. Yeah, he is. How could God be angry? When you hear someone being abused, like a child in the red light district of India, sold as a sex slave, how many of you get angry of an eight-year-old girl that's happening to? It better boil your blood so we can do something. In fact, we're going to give you an opportunity to do something. We're going to talk more about it. Why is that? Because love has justice. So the wrath of God. We talked about this last week. That when a spacecraft goes into the Earth's atmosphere, there's the wrath of the atmosphere. It's contrary. The only way a spacecraft can get through the atmosphere of the Earth, there has to be a heat shield to protect it. The only way you and I can face God is through the covering of Jesus Christ. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. This is Romans chapter 1. They have... For the, God's, God's attributes have clearly been perceived ever since the creation of the world, the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. It's obvious that there is a God. How do you respond to that? Are you telling me someone, an animist someplace, someplace in some rainforest, and maybe in Brazil, they never heard about, are you saying that God's going to send them to hell? No, God will not send someone to hell based upon their revela- not having a revelation of Jesus. But if they reject the revelation they do have, it could be a problem. However, before you get upset with me, hold on. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. I'm telling you right now, everyone knows there's a God. But you can fool yourself into believing there's not a God. Because if you deny it over and over and over, your heart can get so hard that you lose any ability to receive the truth of God. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature. But because of, and this is what it says in Romans 2, 5, but because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself. God right now is a time of grace. But there's coming a day where God's wrath will be revealed against nature. And you better be ready with God. The Bible says he's slow in his return because he wants all men and women to be saved. God is a just judge. He's the judge. I'm not. And God is angry with wicked every day. That's what it says in Scripture. And so are you. 
You're angry at wickedness. And your justice is not even close to God. I can go on and on about this. I, can't, I wish I could go longer. But the Lord isn't really slow, right, about his promise, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. That's what God wants to do. That's why he's waiting. That's why I'm speaking this today. C.S. Lewis says this, said this. There are only two kinds of people in the end. Those who say to God, thy will be done. And those whom God says to them, thy will be done. All that are in hell, choose it. Without that self-choice, there could be no hell. No soul that seriously and constantly desires joy will ever miss it. Those who seek, find. Those who knock, it is open to them. In fact, I, I'm going to show you some scripture verses. What he's saying is true. So we have natural revelation. Everyone has received a knowledge of God. Here's a second one. God will reveal himself to those who want to know him. Everyone goes, oh, my God. If you've ever seen a baby be born, it's a miracle. God will reveal himself to those who want to know him. How can I say that? The scriptures say it. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Right, we all know that one. Here's this is the next verse after then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me. The Bible gives a promise. It's true. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be there. That's what the Word of God says. I will be there if you search with all your heart. There's a book I read a number of years ago called Persian Springs. Talks about four Iranians that had visions of Jesus in mosque, and he, God came to him. We have a person in our church, Darius Rose, who was who believed in Islam, who through God's yearning gave his life to Christ. Then he began to doubt it, and Jesus showed up in his bedroom. And Darius is a very smart and intelligent man. My father had that same experience. We have missionaries, Dustin talks about in, in Afghanistan how a guy was in a mosque and he kept seeing this person with a beautiful face, with a white robe, and didn't know who it was. And he, he says, I don't know who it is. And the, in the mosque, it says, tomorrow you will meet somebody. And these people came. I heard about you, my dream. And then he gave his life to Jesus. I'm telling you, it's happening all the time. Don Buteri in Indonesia tells me stories. He can tell 30 stories or more about people that gave their life to Christ because Christ showed up in their dreams or a mosque. In fact, I laugh about this because Don Buteri, he'll be back here next year, Lord willing, he cracks me up. I said, that's amazing, Don, that all those people are, are having visions of Jesus. He says, yeah, isn't it horrible? I'm like, excuse me, why is that horrible? That's our job. We're not doing our job, so God has to do it himself. It's like your mother making your bed. Well, you should make your own. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. See, Deuteronomy 4.29. But from there, you will seek the Lord, your God, and you will find. Look, let me tell you something, everybody. If you really want to know God, Tim Keller says this, the pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York. He's no longer the press pastor there. He said, I have young people come to my office all the time. And, he said, and they asked me, I don't believe in God. I have a hard time believing. This is what he said. Every single time I asked them this question, are you sleeping with your girlfriend or boyfriend? And they go, yes, I am. He says, the truth is, most people want to say there's no God so they can be their own God. And they deceive themselves. Because what's known about God is in every single person. That's what Tim Keller said. I think he's absolutely correct about that. And I'm just picking on that thing. But I'm just saying. But you'll find the Lord. In Acts 17, 26 to 27, says this. And he made from one man, that's Adam, every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined a lot of periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. You're chosen before the foundation of the earth. God knew you'd be here this morning. God knew you'd be watching wherever you're watching, even if it's a year or two from now. God knows you. Let me say something to you. I might not know you, but God knows you. No one knows me. I understand that. God knows you. God knows you. God knows you. God knows you. He knows every hair follicle on your head. He knows every chromosome in your body. He knows every hope, fear. He knows every dream. And he made from one man 
having determined on a lot of periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place that they should seek God. Are you seeking God? Are you seeking God? And perhaps feel their way towards him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each of us. He's right here, right now. In fact, it's his very spirit that gives you the ability to even breathe and be alive. He's all around you. But he's not, a, he's not energy of feed. He is a personal God. For God so loved the world. And now we hear this all the time, but listen to this. Look at, it as, look at this verse like it's the first time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that who shall ever, in the most inclusive relationship there is, believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through not good works, not through Buddhism, not through Islam, but through him. And the reason how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. How will they know unless someone is sent? That's why Jesus says, go into all the earth preaching the gospel to every nation, every tongue, every tribe. Jesus would not go through all that suffering if it didn't make a difference. He said, God, is there any other way? No, there's only one way. He was the propitiation. He was the payment. And the beautiful thing is, here's what's so beautiful. You're a wreck, and there's nothing you can do to save yourself. That's the good news. Let me say that again. You're a wreck, and there's absolutely nothing you can do to save yourself. You can't. You're like that woman on the third floor of the apartment building. Right before, Jesus is going to catch you. But you have to take that step of faith. You're not saved by faith. You're saved by God's grace through faith. That's why no one can boast. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already. Because he's not believed in the name of of our only Son of the Lord. If you really want to know God, you can find God. If you really want to know God, you can find, and by the way, you're welcome to come to this church and find out God. We're not threatened because I know he's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Salvation is based on God's grace, not our faith, but our faith activates God's grace. Does that make sense, everybody? I hope you catch that. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. As we prepare ourselves for communion. Let me ask you a question. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? It's the most inclusive declaration ever. It doesn't make a difference what you've done in the past. Maybe you used to follow God and you walked away. Maybe that's you in line. Maybe you did a Google search and you came up here. God knows your name. He knows you. He loves you. You're made in his image. You're made by God for him. And you are welcome to be accepted by God based upon what Jesus Christ did for you. You are welcome to receive Jesus. No difference. If you'd like to give your life to Christ, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, today's the day. Maybe you used to follow God and you walked away. Today's the day. You know what? I'm going to ask you with every head bowed. You say, Pastor, I never gave my life to Christ, but today I want to do that. Or maybe you'd say, I used to follow God, but I've, I'm not following anymore. But today I want to make it right. Anyone this morning would say, that's me. Let's be bold. Anyone online as well. Go ahead and tell people online through the comment section. Anyone today want to give their life to Christ? Just a quick show of hands. Anyone? Okay. Let's pray this prayer together in our hearts. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose again from the dead. I choose to turn away from my sins. I ask you to forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong. And I choose to step down from being in charge of my life. Thank you. Based upon what you did, I am now your child. Thank you that my sins are forgiven based upon what you did. 
I receive you in my life. Take control. Thank you that I am now a child of you. In Jesus' name. If you did that for the first, very first time today, you can click on After Our Time Today. Or there's a card in front of your seat, connection card. Just fill that out. Say, I made a commitment to the Lord today. We want to help you in your journey. We're all on the same path together. Maybe I've been on the path a little longer than you, but you know what? All of us need God. And together we can see him more beautifully. Amen, everybody. Amen. At this time.